I'll tell you what, this boat is absolutely flying along. It feels really, really good. The boat's just happy. I'm happy, Skipper's happy. Life is good. So what I'm going to do is clear the marina at entrance, take a turn to port, bring her head to wind. I'll put her on wind hold at zero, get the main up, two reefs, and then we should hit 25 knots of wind as we get around that headland, it should drop down to 20. And then once we've got an idea of what's going on there and how big the swell is, then what we'll do is consider the um, half a jib. Yeah, bring it into the wind. And we're off again. Ugh. Such a good feeling to be back out on the water. I do enjoy being in marinas. I know that's not very sailory of me, but it is kind of like a little mini break. You know, it's like very convenient and you have unlimited electricity, unlimited water. You don't have to worry about getting in the dinghy every time you want to just get something. You don't have to worry about running out of milk or bread or anything. You know, you can go and have a coffee. It's all good, you know, I, I do enjoy, I have to admit, I do enjoy being in a marina. But that being said, that moment where you leave the marina and it's a beautiful sunny day and you are off to spend the night in a gorgeous anchorage, that is such a good feeling, it's such a good feeling. And I think sometimes, we are definitely guilty of this, we've kind of gotten settled into marina life and it's all so convenient and easy and sometimes you know boat life is, is actually really inconvenient and difficult so it, it makes quite a nice change and it's hard sometimes to get that kind of momentum to leave again but then you know once you're out and you're back on the water sails are up sun's out kind of sort of then uh, you realize that it's, it's just such a good feeling you know and you're always really glad that you're, you're out again yeah I'm pumped I'm excited We've got a couple of reefs in the main, as you can see behind me, and uh, we don't have our jib out yet. We're going to wait until we get. We've got. Um, we're in the lee of the land at the moment, and then, as you can see, once we get past this headland, we anticipate that we'll get quite a bit of wind coming past that headland. And once we're out into the channel, which is behind, is in that direction here. Once we're in the channel, um, we'll be able to see what the wind is actually kind of doing and make a decision then on whether to put the jib out or not. We've said it before in this series, but just to get everyone kind of clear, we don't have an anemometer, so we don't know what the wind is doing right now. We can guess, and we're making some pretty good guesses, I think. But, oh, there's a gust. We don't know for sure. So we're being very conservative. Oh God, jeez. That gust must be at least 25 knots. I'm like actually holding on to the boat. You know that feeling when like you're like half getting blown over by the wind? I love how putting the jib out or furling it away is like a one person job on this boat, unlike Ruby Rose. Are we too windy? No, I'm just going around that headland. I don't think it is, but we don't forget we've got to take a, we've got to take a course change. What's our um, wind angle? 90 degrees. Yeah, we're down to three knots, babe. Right. I think we got a bit over keen with our briefing. <laughs> I think you could probably put the whole jib out. You've got one and a half knots of current. This is fun. We are sailing probably at about 50 degrees to the wind and I'm not quite sure how much closer we can pinch up. We're going to test that out in just a minute because we are a little bit off course. Um, but yeah, we've got 
quite a bit of breeze with us at the moment. I'd say judging from the white caps, it would be, I don't know, at least 20. And uh, we're doing about seven and a half knots. Rick, couple of reefs in the main, a uh, reef jib, and we are absolutely flying along. It is awesome. It's such a great day. Loving it. Such a good feeling. Yeah, just looking at the tide, so we've got an outgoing tide um, from um, 9.30 tomorrow morning, so, and, and with the Zoe fleet coming through, it, I would suggest I make a plan to come back around and go through a hook passage, Ella. Uh, copy that, hook passage, yeah, we'll plan, we'll plan hook passage tomorrow. So thank you for that, and uh, we'll, um, we'll let you know where we end up. All right, so where are we going? What I figure that we can do, see this is this is Butterfly Point or what's yeah. it called Butterfly Bay. Yeah. We've only got to make a 20 degree course change to end up in Butterfly Bay. Yeah. Right? We do have to make that now, so yeah. that's what I'm doing. Okay. Right. Let's see how close to the wind we can sail with this thing. Well, I think you're going to put the jib away. Yeah. Well, you're not We're doing seven and a half knots. What, uh, what wind angle do you think we're at? Uh, I don't know, 60. Okay. All right, so interesting comparison. We have a 41-foot catamaran and a 40-foot monohull over there. So we're both about the same waterline length. We've both got apparent wind of about 50 to 60 degrees. They look like they're running 110, 120% Genoa with a double reefed main. We are running half a blade jib and a double reefed main, square top albeit. As such, we're both on the same course and we are pulling away from them. So uh, that's pretty interesting. I think probably we have the sa a similar size sail area. But if you look at the, you know, if anyone wants to know whether or not we're going upwind or not, look at the way that boat's healing. So you can tell that, you know, they're healing pretty heavily. They've got, they know what they're doing actually. They've got everyone on the rail, uh, which is nice to see. But upwind, they can't keep up with us. We pulled away from them. Um, Albeit slowly, I think there's probably less than half a knot in our speeds. Yeah, it's pretty close. It it's is pre pretty good. It is pretty. It is pretty good. I tell you what, this boat is absolutely flying along. It feels really, really good. I have to say, it's very comfortable. It's just happy. The boat's just happy. I'm happy. Skipper's happy. Life is good. It's kind of rare for us coming from a hole. Like usually, for us, speed equaled like discomfort. You know, like if we we're going fast, then we we're really uncomfortable. But here, there's no such compromise. You can just absolutely power along and you're still sitting pretty. So that's a really, that's a lovely body change, let me tell you. Yeah, we're pulling away from that boat, mate. Yeah, we're now like in the channel, like the channel proper. And uh, you can tell because it swells suddenly gotten up. This was truly one of the best sales of the entire year and really allowed us to put this catamaran to the test. Needless to say, we were getting pretty excited for Ruby Rose 2, which will be even bigger and faster than this Charter Cat. And if you're feeling the same way, then hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on our build updates, which we put out regularly. What's that speed at the moment? 6.7. Okay. Although we had initially planned to go to Butterfly Bay, we made a last minute decision to go to Sid Harbour instead to position ourselves well for our next sail to Whitehaven Beach. We also really wanted to climb Whitsunday Peak, which is the highest and I think the toughest hike the Whitsundays has to offer. We weren't sure if the weather would hold out for us, it's been pretty temperamental recently, but we figured there's no time like the present. And so we changed course and made our way into the large shallow harbour. It's so protected in here that anywhere is just about death. All I'm going to do is just wait till we've got under 10 metres, put out 40 metres of chain. Yeah. Oh. 
All right, we'll anchor up here in uh, Sid Harbour. Beautiful, beautiful anchorage, very well protected. We're not having like the best strike rate without anchoring. I mean, we're getting it done, but this is the second time that it's taken us two times to uh, get the anchor to bite. And I'm not sure if it's the anchor itself or if it's our technique or if it's our technique and the anchor. Cause we used to have a Mantis and that was just like so reliable cause it's got the um, roll bar. It just like gets into position and it just bites straight away. On this boat, we've got the Delta and that doesn't have the roll bar so it just if it lands and it's the wrong way up then it just won't bite and i think we need to just think about like how to address that this will be home for tonight oh the two lads came over on a jet ski and they kind of went past said hello and they're like you're right and then i'm like yeah and he goes you're those internet <laughs> <laughs> which i think is actually the best description of my youtube channel ever All right, so we're here, as the sign tells us, and we are going to do the hike up to Whitsunday Peak. Apparently it should be four hours return. I'm hoping that that's a massive overestimation. Found our way across that little uh, stream and back on the trail and it is so so beautiful so calm really quiet all I can hear is birds and the sound of water I mean, this is obviously like a fairly well-used trail but uh, one of the great things about Australia particularly at the moment with the closed borders is that there's not that many people here so you often get these really awesome places almost to yourselves. And certainly we've not seen anyone else yet. It's just beautiful, just walking through the trees. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Ooh, I've been going for about half an hour. It is very muggy down here where there is uh, no breeze, very warm. It's absolutely beautiful. But I must admit this is kind of steeper than I was anticipating. <laughs> we met a couple down the bottom who were like, oh yeah, we're like there and back in like an hour and a half. I thought, oh God, it can't be that hard then. But actually thinking back, they looked like really fit. <laughs> They're wearing like the proper shoes and everything, so uh, maybe they manage a little bit better than we are. We're actually kind of taking the trail of the waterfall, so the waterfall is like next to us this whole time. It's really, really picturesque. God. I feel like we're so close. I feel like there's not much further we can go, like we're so close to the top, I can't see any like trees above us and yet it's just like never ending. Every time I think we can't climb any higher, there's not bloody steps. Oh god, we are so close, so close, but if we don't reach the top soon, we're gonna have to turn around because we're gonna lose the light. I do not want to be up here at night. Oh, oh my god. That was so tough guys. I just couldn't film. Sorry. Oh wow. Are you still alive? My heart rate is 180. Okay. I conveniently forgot my Apple Watch, so thank God I don't know what my heart rate is. Just this view is insane. I look into your eyes, I see we're out of time. 
I guess no one's to blame. Nobody crossed the line. I guess we couldn't see somehow we couldn't feel. We need to take a wriggle on. I know. Tell everyone why we have to suddenly hurry. Because I think he's gonna float away. <laughs> we just saw I think you float. All right. You good? Oh, we need to make a move. Yeah. All right. Let's see how fast we can go down. All right, guys. Oh, we'll we gotta hustle. I'm not gonna film on the way down. I'm just gonna go for it this way. Down, I hope down there. I think down there. Uh, we like ran down. The dinghy is afloat, but we can still get to it because we had the anchor out, so all good. Oh Lord, this is so beautiful. Just check that out. I was saying to Nick that it's a shame really that um, when we're up, up the top there that uh, you know that shower came through just as we got up there because about 10 minutes after we started making our way down the sun came out it would have looked pretty uh, special up there with the sun out like this but I hope you guys enjoyed those views anyway I still think it looked really cool with like you could see the showers passing through and I, I think that looks really awesome seeing like the rain in the distance um, and the rainbow and just like seeing the view from up there is just insane and it's turning out to be such a beautiful evening this anchorage is stunning I have to say I'm so taken with the Whitsundays I love it here I love it and uh, one day I really hope that we can bring our own boat here and uh, cruise these grounds with our own boat that would be like a dream come true I reckon be beautiful and that is a fabulous end to a bloody good day, actually. I've had such a good day. Oh, still getting some gusts through though. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching, guys. And if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It really, really does help. That's why we keep on <laughs> asking you to do it. Give us a thumbs up if you don't mind. And also give us a comment and let us know what you thought of this week's episode. We will be back next week with a brand new episode. See you then.